Hi, uh, my name is Vicente Torres. I am a member and former director of the Mayo Clinic Translational Polycystic Kidney Disease Center and also co-chair of the work group of the Kedigo 2025 Clinical Practice Guideline for the Evaluation, Management and Treatment of ADPKD. In this video, I would like to share some key takeaways for therapies to delay the progression of polycystic kidney disease. First, all patients with ADPKD should be instructed on and encouraged to follow four basic actions to delay uh, disease progression. These include optimal control of hypertension, optimal control of weight, low salt diet, and high water intake. Evidence from observational studies and clinical trials strongly suggests that achieving these goals delays disease progression and extends the survival of kidneys and people with ADPKD. Hypertension control should be strict in young individuals with good kidney function, aiming for a blood pressure target of 110 over 75 millimeters of mercury or lower if tolerated. For everybody else, the target should be the same as for people with other forms of chronic kidney disease, that is a systolic blood pressure of 120 millimeters of mercury or less if tolerated. People should aim for a normal BMI of less than 25 kilograms per meter square because it slows the rate of kidney growth and kidney function decline compared to those in individuals who are overweight, 25 to 30 kilograms per meter square, or obese, more than 30 kilograms per meter square. Low salt diet equal to no more than 5 grams of salt or 2.3 grams of sodium daily has also been associated with lower rates of kidney growth and kidney function decline. Finally, as we will discuss later in this video, high intake of water of 2 to 3 liters per day lowers the risk of kidney stones and possibly urinary tract infections in ADPKD and may slow the progression of the cystic disease. Other ways to manage complications of CKD, such as control of lipids, phosphate and mineral metabolism, acid-base and electrolytes, are the same as those for other forms of kidney disease, with a few exceptions, such as treatment with uh, HIF uh, prolyl hydroxylase inhibitors for anemia, or AGLT2 inhibitors or GLP-1 receptor agonists for diabetes until uh, further uh, safety data become available. Next, a note about uh, vasopressin receptor antagonist uh, tolvaptan. Extensive basic research and preclinical studies uh, have demonstrated that vasopressin and cyclic AMP signaling promote the development and progression of ADPKD. And uh, two large randomized uh, double-blind clinical trials have shown that the vasopressin B2 receptor antagonist tolvaptan slows kidney growth and function decline in people with rapidly progressive uh, ADPKD. Therefore, tolvaptan is recommended in adults with ADPKD and an EGFR 25 milliliters per minute per 1.73 years per meters or more and risk of rapid progressive disease in the absence of contraindications. Absolute contraindications include pregnancy or breastfeeding, uh, urinary tract obstruction or other inability to manage aquatic side effects, uh, requirement for a strong cytochrome P453A inhibitors or significant liver disease other than polycystic liver disease. Potential benefits, harms, and uncertainties regarding long-term treatment with tolvaptan should be discussed. In general, benefits are thought to exceed the risks in people with rapidly progressive disease, which take us to the next takeaway. The methods to assess rapid progression vary in uh, different geographic regions of the world. The Mayo Imaging Classification is recommended to assess rapid progression when imaging is available to measure kidney volumes, with classes 1C to 1E as a criterion for a starting tolvaptan. Uh, yearly decline of EGFR of 3 milliliters per minute or more 
over the period, over the previous three or five years, uh, in the absence of other reasons for the decline, is an alternative uh, method. Predicting renal outcome in polycystic kidney disease, or PROPKD score over six, also provides evidence for risk for rapid progression. The administration of tolvaptan has risks and potential adverse effects. Patients starting tolvaptan should be informed that it causes an immediate increase in urine output that requires a similar increase in intake of water to avoid dehydration. To improve tolerability, tolvaptan is started at a low dose and titrated upwards. Uh, patients should be assured that with time, the polyuria decreases to some extent, a high urine output becomes more tolerable, and the dose can be down titrated if necessary. They should be instructed to hold tolvaptan when access to water or ability to drink is limited because of traveling or illnesses, or in situations when large extrarenal losses of water are present such as during episodes of gastroenteritis or in very hot weather. They should also be informed that tolvaptan causes a rapid but a slight increase in serum creatinine, which is reversible uh, when the drug is discontinued. Liver enzyme elevations occur in approximately 5% of patients within the first 18 months of treatment. To avoid the risk of severe liver injury, all patients should have liver function tests at baseline monthly for the first 18 months and every three months thereafter. Tolvaptan should be held immediately when elevations in enzymes occur and discontinued permanently if the elevation reaches three or more times the upper limit of normal in the absence of other possible explanations. Other rare and relatively minor risk of tolvaptan uh, include flares of gout with hyperuricemia and myalgias with mild elevations of creatine kinase. Another important point to highlight is the increased water intake in the absence of tolvaptan. Increased water intake suppresses vasopressin release and is therefore recommended in all patients with an EGFR over or equal to 25 ml per minute. Uh, patients should be provided individualized counseling to drink two to three liters of water per day unless, the, unless there is a contraindication such as a medical condition or a medication interfering with the capacity to dilute the urine. Increased water intake is not an alternative uh, to tolvaptan in patients with rapidly progressive uh, polycystic kidney disease. Lastly, some notes about other therapies. Other therapies such as mTOR inhibitors, metformins, statins, somatostatin analogs, HGLT2 inhibitors, ketogenic interventions, complementary medicines have not been proven to slow the decline of in kidney function in ADPKD and should not be used for this purpose unless evidence becomes available. That concludes our focus on therapies to delay the progression of uh, polycystic kidney disease. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to explore the entire collection of videos we have assembled on this guideline. We are all very proud of this work and we hope it will meaningfully support both clinicians and the people we care for around the world. The full clinical practice guideline can be accessed online at www.cadigo.org.